Hey there everyone, Al's Unicorn here again, and I decided to make a little uh, video response to a video that was put up recently by Revolution of CG. Many of you who are subscribed to me probably remember that we didn't exactly hit it off all that well a couple years ago uh, in the recent aftermath of the presidential election. Uh, since then, I think that I've drifted uh, a little more in his direction on uh, certain issues. But uh, this particular issue of this current video is one that I am pretty much rock solid in agreement with him. And I just wanted to offer this video response uh, to him, both as an olive branch and also as just a way of kind of augmenting some of the points that he made within the video, which he's getting a lot of uh, comments about uh, with contrary arguments. And that has to do uh, specifically with the issue of empiricism, logic, and reason. I think there is a good deal of obtuseness in many fields of philosophy today, specifically with regards to epistemology. And I think that too many people get hung up on one aspect of a way that we come to an understanding about things, and that is uh, what is referred to as basically uh, sensory perception and rational discourse based upon this, uh, upon which we come to a basic understanding of the material world around us. This is uh, referred to in scripture actually as the light of nature. This is basically the unity of all existence under the broad, basically all-encompassing category of existence and our ability thus to perceive it. Now, <clears throat> Not every philosopher holds, uh, has held to the opinion that this was the only way to acquire knowledge. We go back to the debates between Plato and Aristotle's various philosophies, and we see that um, there is an argument early on in philosophy for the view of intuition and or beatific vision. And this would uh, essentially apply to a non rational means of attaining knowledge. Furthermore, other philosophers since that time have made criticisms about epistemology, that it is essentially, uh, with regards to uh, rationalistic and empiric empiricistic thought, that basically goes that um, empiricism, while it is heavily useful and definitely a necessary aspect of our understanding, is insufficient to account even for itself. And I'll use John Locke as an example, who is probably one of the most uh, popular empiricists here in America. He was very influential on the Founding Fathers. He argued that the way in which we come to knowledge, as essentially spoken by analogy, is basically the same as the way words are written on a page. And we are essentially born, in the words of Th St. Thomas Aquinas, tabula rasa, or as a blank slate. Now obviously the question that is not answered in any of Locke's writings is how does the pen know what to write upon the blank slate? How indeed do we get from uh, the concept of pen and slate essentially to actual intelligible writings? I mean why aren't we just ending up with random scribbles? And uh, this is something that has not really been, I would say, adequately answered since then. This debate's been going on for a long time. And the problem with the YouTube atheist community, and I would just like to state for the record, like Revolution of CG, I am also an ex-atheist. I was a skeptical uh, Anglican up until I was about... Uh, 15, 16 years old, and then that's when I started to drift into unbelief. Um, my mother was an Anglican, my father was a Roman Catholic, and I, um, once I graduated high school, I basically stopped going to church. I went for about a year and a half as a fairly, not quite militant atheist, but definitely a strong atheist, someone who's kind of in the direction of uh, Richard Dawkins. I attribute most of that to my education uh, in public school. And then in addition to that, uh, later on when I got into college and I got exposed to more of the mystical sides of uh, progressive culture, I had a one and a half year fling with Buddhism. And then gradually I kind of worked my way back to where I am now. It was a gradual process. It took about, I'd say about eight or nine years roughly uh, for me to get from 
joining up with Christianity again to coming back to where I am now. But uh, as somebody who comes from the atheist persuasion uh, originally, uh, before essentially being reborn, as it were, I do have a shared uh, sympathy uh, for atheists in several categories. I think that most fundamentalistic Christians have a very poor understanding of science and technology in particular, but also of mathematics and philosophy. They're overly parochial, and they've essentially subjected themselves uh, to a state of complete and utter ignorance. Now, by the same token, I share many beliefs in common with them, uh, which I'm not going to get into specifically at this time, but uh, I, I accept the entire Bible cover to cover verbatim, and I have a very specific uh, systematic theology and orthodoxy that I go by in order to understand it, so I'm a part of a very specific denomination that is very different from the uh, progressive Pentecostalism that uh, Revolution of CG was subjected to, and I would state for the record that anybody that is, any child that is subjected to Pentecostalism is going to become either an atheist or is going to become extremely skeptical of religion in general because what they teach is heavily heretical, especially if you have any kind of understanding of scripture, and it's purely irrational. It essentially divorces sense uh, from, from the picture completely, whether it's liturgically or if it's in terms of all of your secular living outside of the church. And... <clears throat> I guess the point that I'm getting at here is that there's a lot of nuances between positions here on YouTube. I mean, not every Christian is in agreement with each other on these issues. You have Thomistic Roman Catholics who are basically empiricists and have a lot of agreements with Dawkins on certain things, except for, I would say, probably the God issue and the issue of Christ. And I would argue that the uh, Thomists make a much more solid case uh, for empiricism because they do have that somewhat Platonistic tilt of Christianity to fall back on when they get called to task on the question of how is our knowledge made intelligible since we don't have a presupposed system or design in place. Everything is essentially tabula rasa, so to speak. And on top of that, you have uh, more mystical Christians uh, who essentially don't agree with each other and think that everybody who is not mystical enough for their taste are apostates. And then you have people like me that are really heavily doctrinal, and I accept many of the tenets of science. I think every good Augustinian does, but I also have a good deal of skepticism towards uh, Darwinism and other uh, teachings of uh, essentially, I would say it's the school of a biogenesis or the, the school of a skeptical agnosticism. I'm not an agnostic, and uh, I've that's one position that I was never really able to adopt. I could never see the universe as being subject only to my opinions and that I could say, well, I don't believe this, and therefore that's good enough for me. I always had to know yes or no, is this a fact or is it not? And that's pretty much how I got to where I was when I was an atheist and also how I got to be when I moved out of it. But suffice to say, uh, Revolution of CG, you, you make a good point uh, regarding the nature of discourse here on YouTube. I think people are very unreasonable. I think there's a little bit uh, of it to go around on both sides. I think there are a good number of militant atheists on here that are extremely hostile to the idea of having a rational debate, despite the fact that they claim to be proponents of reason. And for that reason, I tend to, for the most part, avoid conversations on this topic. I know that a good number of my subscriber base are atheists, and I am not outwardly hostile towards them. And I do try to limit the amount of talking of the blogs that I do with regards to the topic of religion out of respect for them because they're here for something other than that. They want to hear my views on politics or they want me to comment on this or that news story or they want me to do something else related to art or poetry or something like that. But <clears throat> things have been definitely unnecessarily hostile here. I think that uh, a lot of the bloggers on here in particular who have made atheism their life, it it 
makes one question if they actually have a life to speak of, um, particularly people like uh, TJ, the amazing atheist. Uh, his uh, daily existence seems to consist of making videos and slamming down McDonald's cheeseburgers, and that's if that's uh, if he wants to convince people of the errors of religion, he is not a good poster boy for it because I'd rather be a Pentecostal lunatic than a fat, chubby asshole. <laughs> Pardon my French. And anyway, just to sum up, good video, agreed with you on all points, and uh, I think you also make a very good point in the uh, comments section. Um, how do you rationally measure or account for love? How do you rationally account for things such as friendship and all of these other things? When you read most uh, evolutionary biologists, they refer to it as a genetic accident or an accident of physics that we have such things as friendship, fellowship, and other things which generally go against the standard tenets of Darwinism, which is survival of the strongest species, survival of the fittest, and its obvious implications within uh, so-called human politics. I mean, it would, na it would naturally follow that everybody that's a uh, that's uh, living in the world who is subject to the Darwin's laws of uh, nature would naturally essentially be cannibalizing each other in the interest of uh, self-interest. But uh, even amongst the most ruggedly capitalistic uh, of us, we are very benevolent, we are very charitable, we do what we can to accommodate those who are less fortunate than us. And you don't see any accounting for this kind of behavior in atheism. They just state, oh, it's here, it's, it's not part of the equation, so we can dismiss it, which I think is heavily disingenuous. So that's basically it for this uh, Stream of Consciousness blog. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.